is going to be a reading from Cornell Law School coming from Code Title 11, United States Code 541, Property of the Estate. A, the commencement of a case under Section 301, 302, or 303 of this title creates an estate. Such a state is comprised of all the following property, wherever located and by whomever held. One, except as provided in subsection B and C2 of this section, all legal or equitable interests of the debtor in property as of the commencement of the case. Two, this of the debtor or the debtor's spouse in community property as of the commencement of the case that is, A, under the sole equal or joint management and control of the debtor, or B, liable for an allowable claim against the debtor, or for both an allowable claim against the debtor and an allowable claim against the debtor's spouse to the extent that such interest is so liable. Three, any interest in property that the trustee recovers under section 329B, 363N, 543, 23 of this title for any interest in property preserves preserved for the benefit of transfer to the estate under section 501 uh, excuse me under section 510c or 551 of this title interest in private property that would have been property of the estate uh, if such interest had been an interest of the debtor on the date of the filing of the petition and that the debtor acquires or becomes entitled to acquire within 180 days after a by bequest of bequest the inheritance as a result of a property settlement agreement with the debtor's spouse or of an inter locator interloper inter locator or final divorce decree or C as a beneficiary of a life insurance policy or a death benefit plan. Six, proceeds, product, offspring, rents, and profits of or from property of the estate, except such as are earnings from services performed by an individual debtor after the commencement of the case. Seven, any interest in property requires after the commencement B, property of the state does not include any power made solely for the benefit of an entity of two. Any the debtor as a leasee under the lease of non-residential that has terminated operation of the stated term of for the commencement of the case under the ceases to include any debtor as a leasee under a lease of non-residential real property that has terminated at the expiration term of such lease during the case. Three, any eligible, any eligibility of the debtor to participate in programs authorized under the High Education Act of 1965 as codified at 20 U.S.C. 1001 at the sequence at uh, 42 U.S.C. 
two seven five one at the secret at uh <clears throat> or any accreditation status or state licensure of the debtor as an educational institution or any interest of the debtor in liquid or gases hydrocarbons in the extent that a the debtor has transferred or has agreed to transfer such interest pursuant to a formal agreement or any written agreement directly related to the format agreement and a AR2 but for the operation of this paragraph the estate could include the interest referred to in clause 1 or I only by virtue of section 365 or 544A3 of this title or B if debtor has transferred such interest pursuant to a written conveyance of a production payment to an entity that does not participate in the operation of the property from which such production payment is transferred and I uh, to a subpart two uh, but for the operation of this paragraph, the estate could include the interest referred to in clause one only by virtue of section 365 or 552 of this title. Five funds placed in an education individual as the final. Excuse me. Section five one of the revenue code of not sixty five days before the date of the filing of the petition in the case under the title, but a only if the designated beneficiary of such account was a child and child. For which funds such account to the extent funds if not pledged or promised to any entity in connection with extension of credit and to or not excess as a section. 73E Revenue Code of 1986 and of funds placed in such accounts having the same designated beneficiary not earlier than 700 nor before such there is so much of such funds as does not exceed six funds used to purchase a tuition credit or certificate or contributed to an account in accordance with section five b one a of the code of 1986 Qualified state tuition as defined in section 529B1, not later than 360 before the date of the petition in the case that is title the designated beneficiary of the amount paid or to such tuition. The child, stepchild, grandchild, or stepchild of the debtor of a taxable year for which funds were contributed be with respect to the aggregate amount paid or contributed to such program having the same designated beneficiary only so much of 
such amount as does not exceed the total contributions permitted under section 529b6 of such code with respect to such beneficiary as adjusted beginning on the date of the filing of petition in the case under this title by the annual increase or decrease rounded to the nearest tenth of 1% in the education expenditure category of the consumer price index prepared by the Department of Labor. And C, in the case of funds paid or contributed to such program having having the same designated beneficiary not earlier than 720 days nor later than 365 days before such date, only so much as funds as does not exceed $5,000. Seven, any A, withheld by an employer from the wages of employee for payment as contributions. Support A, I mean one, two, and then uh, uh, one is an employee benefit plan that is subject to Title I of the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974 or under an employee benefit plan, which is a governmental plan under Section 414D of the Eternal Revenue Code of 1986 to a deferred compensation plan under Section 457 of the Eternal Revenue Code of 1986 or 3, a tax deferred annuity under Section 5, uh, excuse me, under Section 403B of the Eternal Revenue Code of 1886, uh, except that such amount under the subparagraph shall not constitute disposable income as defined in section 1325b2 or 2 to a health insurance plan regulated by state law whether or not subject to such title or b received by an employer from employees for payment as contributions one, two, and then an employee benefit plan that is subject to Title I of the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974 or under an employee benefit plan, which is a governmental plan under Section 414D of the Eternal Revenue Code of 1986. To a deferred compensation plan under Section 457 of the Eternal Revenue Code of 1986, or three, a tax deferred annuity under Section 403B of the Eternal Revenue Code of 1986, except that such amount under the subparagraph shall not constitute disposable income as defined in Section 1325B2 or 2 to a health insurance plan regulated by state law, whether or not subject to such title. Eight, subject to subchapter 3 of chapter 5, any interest of the debtor in property whether the debtor pledged or sold tangible personal property other than securities or written or printed evidences of indebtedness or title as collateral for a loan or advance of money given by a person licensed under law to make such loans or advances where a a tangible Personal property is in possession of the pledgee or transferee. The